It is good to be in a friendly church. Better than a stuffy church, right? Like you actually feel like you can talk and say hi to somebody. I'm going to get going because uh, someone told me they want to eat a burger as fast as possible. And I was like, well, you could just take your time eating it. And they're like, no, I want to go start eating it as fast as possible. Uh, I was like, oh, are you telling me to hurry? And they said, yeah, we are. <laughs> you know what, though? One time I was, I felt guilty. I'm just going to say that. I, have you ever felt guilty about how much time you spent in prayer? Have you? It had been like, gosh, I just, if I would have spent more time in prayer, if I would have prayed more, if I, if I was a, if I was a really good Christian, I would probably spend at least 20 minutes in prayer. I would at least sing a worship song at home alone. If I, you know what I mean? And one time I was praying, and, and I was rushed. I had to get to work. And uh, uh, I, I think I prayed for about five minutes, and it was powerful. And I'm like, Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I don't have more time to pray. And, and the Lord, he, he just spoke up in my spirit, and he said, I don't need much time at all. I can do amazing things in a minute. And he released me from condemnation just like that. Why? Because he is not the author of condemnation. He releases us into freedom. God is so powerful, he can speak a, a word and create a world. Amen? Huh? Don't get under condemnation about uh, uh, the things that God, I I if you're like, man, I, I need to have a regular prayer life, then do it. Do it. All right. We're talking about faith. We're talking about faith. And what we're doing is we're going through Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, preachers call this the uh, uh, hall of fame of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. And last week we brought up the first one, which was uh, Cain and Abel. Abel. The, the Bible used Abel, all, all three sentences about Abel and his quick little life, as an example for faith. Well, why was Abel such a great example for faith? What did he do? He gave an offering that was acceptable to God, right? And you contrast that with his brother's offering, which was not accepted. And it was like, well, why? He did sacrifice, didn't he? Is not a sacrifice good enough for God? I mean, come on. What do you need, God? And the Bible said something real quick, and I'm going to be real fast with this. The Bible said that Cain brought some of what he had to the Lord. But Abel brought the first and the best. Did you catch that? Cain just brought something to God. Here you go. Uh, here I can't use this anymore, God. My barn is full of wheat. There's still wheat out in the fields. I can't even give this stuff away. Can you use it? And Abel brought the first portion, the first portion of his flock, and the best. It was his heart. I, I am, I'm not going to be shoddy with my gifts to God. I'm going to give him the first and I'm going to give him the best. Sometimes we, we get to the end of our budget. Ah, I'm trying not to. Sit. We get to the end of our budget. We're like, well, looks like we're not giving this week. Whatever's left over, I can give to God. Hey, pastor, we can't use this. Could the church? I'm like, no. We can't even fit in this building what we got. <laughs> we got no storage. Uh, well, this week we're talking about pleasing God, pleasing God, being well-pleasing to God. And I hope this opens your, your, your thoughts and ideas today about what would truly please God with your life. And, and sometimes we think, you know, uh, uh, conquering one of our, 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 our worst demons or, or perhaps 
you know, getting the continent of Africa saved or feeding every child in India. You know, what would please God if I stood in the middle of work and started a worship song and got them all singing? That would probably be, uh, you know what I mean? We think of these kind of real humongous things that are very, uh, show everybody around us what we're doing, right? That would be pleasing to God. And the Bible says, uh, right after Abel, it talks about Enoch. And it said, Enoch pleased God. In fact, the word it uses to describe how well Enoch pleased God is used uh, uh, only one other time in that situation. But it is used to consistently describe Enoch's life being well pleasing to God. Enoch. Now, now, real fast, before we do this, we're going to do a quick lesson on Bible interpretation. Would you like to know, and, and you're going to be years, light years ahead of everybody else, okay? Quick lesson on Bible interpretation. You ready? Super easy. Light years ahead of everybody. The best way to interpret the Bible. You want to know what it is? More Bible. The scriptures interpret uh, uh, themselves through comparison really, really well. The best Bible interpretation is the Bible itself. And here's why that's important. We're going to open up to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. And read about Enoch's life. It's about two sentences long. Enoch. Enoch. Yet he's listed in the hall of fame of faith. Enoch. Enoch. Let's look what he did. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. If you don't know how to find Genesis, just uh, close your Bible and start opening it. Right at the beginning. Flip a couple pages, you'll be there. I know when I I first started, uh, I bought my first Bible and uh, I, I... I tried to just buy the nicest Bible I could, the most expensive Bible I could. There you go. There you go. And so I bought a King James Bible, and it was super pretty, really nice. And I didn't under even the names of the books, and I'm like, this don't make sense. And why is this not alphabetized? Maybe it's done, you know, chronologically. No, it's not. <laughs> Is there any, you know, how, how's this assembled? Well, kind of, like, you know, it's kind of like sections. That has had nothing to do with my sermon. Genesis chapter 5, did you find it? I'll give you lots of time to find it. Everybody there, Genesis chapter 5. All right? Genesis chapter 5. So uh, scroll down to 22. Actually, uh, 21. And, and here's Enoch. Here's Enoch's life. It goes from 21 to 26. Enoch. So Enoch was born. And then verse 21. When Enoch was 65 years old, man, I stopped having kids before I was 40. Can you imagine having your first kid at 65? Holy moly. I mean, I know they lived a lot longer there, but still. Listen to this. Listen, I got got a few things to share. When Enoch was 65, he became the father of Methuselah. They called him meth for short. <laughs> Terrible name. I, don't, I have no idea how they got these. After the birth, oh, sorry, Methuselah, if you heard that. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. And he had other sons and daughters. Now, I don't know about you, but after I had kids, life got harder, not easier. I had less time, not more time. And then I thought it would be a good idea to have another kid. Actually, I didn't even think that far ahead. I was like, what do you mean you're pregnant? (laughs) She's like, what do you mean? What do I mean? How did that happen? And then I had another kid. Well, she did. 
And then she had another kid. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we gotta put a stop to this. <laughs> I mean, when I was done changing diapers, I thought back, I just changed diapers for a decade. <laughs> a decade. Someone's like, oh, I'm having my second baby. I'm like, Psh, whatever. <laughs> Try counting them to make sure you got them all. Anyways. So I didn't have a lot of time. And on top of that, I'm like, being a pastor sounds like a great idea. Let's try that. Those guys just stand around and pray all day. I said that to an evangelist once. He almost swung at me. I said, what do you do? You're an evangelist. You, do, you work twice a week and you just preach? Whoa, hey. <laughs> So Enoch has his first child at 65, and then the Bible records him starting to walk closely with the Lord. I, I, I know this, when you have children, you get real serious about lives. Sometimes, sometimes a, a child in life will really save your, say, uh, uh, sort of wake you up out of youthful rebellion, right? You, you have a kid and you're like, oh man, I can't be messing around no more this child depends on me and Enoch has his first child and he really sinks himself into God and then Enoch has other sons and daughters plural so more than one son and more than one daughter so he at least has five kids right And he walked with God. How do you do that? I don't think they had a Costco. So it's not like Enoch can go to Costco, stock up on groceries, and spend the rest of the week praying. Right? No, he can't. Like, like have you ever, I, I had a, a foreign exchange student friend of mine when I was in Bible school. And they, they she lived in northern France. And she said, I've gained like almost 40 pounds since I've lived here. I'm like, all right, well, you're in the south. I mean, look around. Okay, you've never been there. Been there. <laughs> Anyways, she goes, there is, I'm like, well, what happened? What, what, what's wrong? She goes, there is food on every corner. I'm like, well, what's it like where you're from? We have to walk every day to a small market. Our fridges are that big. And we only uh, uh, buy and prepare what we can eat that day and maybe a little the next day. You know, I'm like, I got two fridges and two freezers. <laughs> Not counting the freezers connected to the fridges. <laughs> I don't even know why we're still grocery shopping. So, so this is what I'm saying. Is Enoch's got to be a busy guy, right? Every day he's got to prepare his own food. Every day he's got to take care of his kids. Every day he's got responsibilities. He has no modern things except for maybe an iPhone to text his buddies and say, I need help. Right? He's got nothing. Enoch lived 365 years, verse 23, walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. That's it. We're done. That's Enoch. Huh? That was it. Hall of Fame of Faith. Put him right in there. Why? Why? Because he had kids and walked with God? I, I mean, there's a bunch of us that do that, right? Hebrews chapter 11. This is why I say it is so good to interpret the scripture with other scriptures. Because Hebrews chapter 11 written to the Hebrews, has a, has a great uh, 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 base in which to interpret this uh, scripture in Genesis chapter 5. So go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. There's a little bit more, some, some detail about it, but it's the same thing. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. 
Okay? This is New Living Translation, Hebrews chapter 11. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up into heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven. We're, we're learning about faith. What, what is faith? Is faith just a way to get better when I have a cold? Help me out with the bill? What, what is faith? I mean, with Cain and Abel, we learned that faith says, I put God first and I give God my best no matter what that means. That's a lot of trust in God. Separating out the first and the very best for him. Now here's, here's something else we can learn about faith from Enoch. It was by faith Enoch was taken up into heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. That is his claim to faith fame. He pleased God. God. He pleased God. Verse 6. Ready? Verse 6. And without faith, come on, good, good, good faith people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 6. I'm reading it how I have it memorized. <laughs> and it is, verse 6, verse 6. You ready? And it is impossible to please God without faith it's come on because we always sing the song and put it on our cars and on our fridges all things are possible and this talks about what is impossible it is absolutely impossible to please god without faith it's not going to happen. You're not going to do it. Why? And it is impossible to please God without faith. The very next scripture tells you why. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Enoch had a testimony. He pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because anyone who comes to God must believe. Must believe. You must, when you come to God, you're saying, God, I'm not sure if you're God. Then he's like, then you started your sentence wrong. Right? If you are God. I think a lot of us prayed that before we were born again. If you are God, what can... If he that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Both those things are good. That you believe God is... And that you believe he'll reward you for diligently seeking him. Enoch did this for 300 years after he had kids. Man, I was seeking God awesome before I had kids and before I got married. Then when I got married and had kids, I had a lot of other things to do. It wasn't easy. I had to really try. I had to start setting my alarm. I had to say no to some things. I couldn't say yes to everything. I couldn't just get up and go. And Enoch did this for 300 years. Heard one preacher say it like this. God and Enoch were walking one day, and it got so late that God was like, we're closer to my house than your house. You want to just crash here? Okay. And Enoch stayed. Sure. 
I don't know how it happened. But God raptured him. Enoch never died. Jesus died. Moses died. Abraham died. Enoch didn't die. Because he pleased God. He pleased God so much. God's like, you're my best buddy. I'm taking you everywhere. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, I want to... I shared with you right before we started about being under condemnation, about not praying enough. Right? Remember? That, that sometimes we, we start to feel like, I just, I don't seek God enough. And, and, I, and what I don't want you to do is walk away from here today under pressure to say, pastor says it's super important. I've got to make time for God. And we're trying to find something to move out of the way. And I want to tell you about something different today. You don't have to move anything out of the way today. You don't have to, you don't have to cancel appointments. On, not that that's bad. I think that's great. Not that like ditching your TV one night or turning off Netflix ain't bad. I don't think it'd be that bad. Pause YouTube and pray. I don't think any of that would be bad. Don't sign into your game. Choo, choo, choo. <laughs> and pray. I, I, but what I want to teach you about today is the power the, that, that, and, and the closeness of fellowship that Enoch discovered. And every single one of you, every, including myself, can access this and can do this. This is exactly how Enoch pleased God. And it's our big idea for today. Look at your bulletin. Our big idea for today, the message. This is what I want you to walk out and know today. You ready? Wherever I go and whatever I do, I take God with me. Wherever I go and whatever I do, I take God with me. You know what you could also call this? Walking in the fear of God. Why? Because when the fear of God is just awareness of who he is. Right? And when you're aware, come on, come on, of God being around you, you're like, Straighten up. <laughs> hey, you want to come over? Absolutely. I don't even know who you are. Sorry, Jesus. I don't even know them. <laughs> Stay away. Be like inviting pastor over to your party. Be like, hold on. He's going to leave. Pastor, you almost done? Hold on. You're getting tired, right? But see, the word where, where it says an Enoch walk with God, it doesn't, mean he, it doesn't mean a manner of life or a lifestyle. A lot of times in the Bible we see, and he walked with God. And, and, and we just picture that as your manner of life, your lifestyle. You know, you walk with God. And that's somebody that walks with God. Why? I don't know. They just got something about them. They seem extra good. <laughs> right? It's their manner of life. It literally means to walk around. Like everywhere Enoch went, everything he had to do, he was communicating with God. And here, here, here's something that you have that Enoch did not have. God living in you. He did not have that. If you are a born-again Christian, God lives in you. That means whether you realize it or not, everywhere you go, he's there. just depends upon you remembering and acknowledging. Look at this. Us Christians under the New Covenant, the New Testament, have the ability to walk Far, we literally walk with God everywhere we go. Everywhere. 
way better than Enoch. Enoch had to remind himself of a God that was separated from him because he was not righteous in his spirit. He was not. Enoch could not get born again. Enoch died under the, or Enoch didn't, but. Old Testament people did not, did not go to heaven. They had to be kept in the waiting room, so to speak, and wait for Jesus to die for their sins and make them the righteousness that God expected. But you, my dear people, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are the righteousness of God. There is nothing in between you and God the Father. There is nothing in between you and Jesus. There is, there is no gap in communication between you and the Holy Spirit except what's between your ears. It was about 20 years ago. It was when I first moved here to Lake Havasu, I started exploring this. I started reading after certain people, like old monks and whatnot, that they would experience this intense uh, presence of God. That, that, and the secret, their secret sauce was this. They just made themselves aware of the fact that God was in them and with them all the time. That anywhere they went and wherever, wherever they went and whatever they did, God was with them. When they walked out, when they had to put the kids to bed, when they went grocery shopping, when they went driving down the street, when they went and hung out with their friends, everywhere they went, whatever they did, God was with them. In fact, uh, uh, one guy, uh, uh, oh, man. Well, there was a couple guys. There was one guy. He was uh, Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence. Woo! Brother Lawrence was a monk, 16th century, and he was a dishwasher in a monastery. They say if you got close to this guy, the power of God around him was so strong. We're not talking about charismatic preacher on TBN. We're talking about a monk in the 16th century. The power of God on him so strong, you got close to him, you, you, you hit the ground. It was, it was amazing. People didn't bother him while he did the dishes. Think about that. That's also a bonus. But listen, uh, the awareness of God. Now, here's the other part of that, that Enoch recognized, that if I take God wherever I go and whatever I do, he rewards me for it. He rewards you for it. He's saying, if you'll take me everywhere you go, if you'll acknowledge my presence with you in whatever you're doing, I'll reward you. I will reward you. It will take effort, and you'll be rewarded for it. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to read real quick Romans 8, and then we're going to, we're going to uh, talk about a quick meditation I have for you. Romans 8. Okay, really, real, real fast. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. You got this. Romans chapter 8. So, and we're going to start in verse 5. Just wait a minute. Don't read. What I started realizing is that when we're young, we're taught to pray, Right? And this is how we're taught to pray. Sit down, fold your hands, close your eyes. Now pray. You can't do anything else if you're doing this, right? And the reason why is because, you know, you don't want the kids touching each other. You don't want them, you know, distracted. So close your eyes and fold your hands and then pray. And I started going, but what, what if I teach myself to pray with my eyes open. Think of how much more I can pray. Because I mean, I, I'm usually like, I'm sorry, Lord, I won't pray. Anymore. Come on. 
I can pray while I'm driving. If I don't have to fold my hands, I can pray while I'm working. I can pray. I can, in fact, if I even use a different word other than pray, I can probably talk to God a lot more. And wherever I go and whatever I do, I can take God with me and he'll reward me for it. Enoch is listed in the hall of fame of faith because he pleased God. His faith said, I believe God hears me and walks with me. If you're a Christian, God lives in you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, he is with you. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Ready? Listen to this. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And, and that word control... It's not like a remote control. It's not like a, 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 a video game controller. That word control is whatever I am giving my attention to. If I'm giving my attention to everything my carnal nature wants or desires, go get this, go eat that, come on. Eat a bunch of popcorn, Tim, and then wrestle all night with a stomach ache. Jesus name or paying attention to the spirit of God so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace for the sinful nature is hostile to God it never did obeys God's laws and it never will that's why those who are still under control of their sinful nature can never please God same word but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if the Spirit of God is living in you. Amen. Amen. If the Spirit of God is in you, you have the ability to follow after Him. Take Him wherever you go and whatever you do. How do I walk free from sin? Take God with you wherever you go and whatever you do. You feel tempted? Start talking to God. Both things won't exist at the same time, right? You, 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 you can either give this one your attention or that one your attention. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. Now, listen, we're going we're gonna to do water baptism today. If you uh, uh, need to or want to be water baptized, I would encourage you to be water baptized. In my life... I, uh, I wanted to seek God and knew nothing about him. And so uh, a friend of mine stopped by my house. I wasn't serving God. I was very far from God. But I wanted to seek God. And I thought if I got water baptized, I might get close to God. That's it. That's all I knew. I, I, I knew nothing. Hadn't been to church in years. And, and so he came over and he said, and, and I wasn't the greatest person at this point in my life, Right? Did a lot of bad things. I, I, I was in a mode of self-destruction, if you will. And so this guy comes by and he goes, hey, Tim, I'm going to be baptized. And I said, oh, that's great. Can I get baptized with you? And he goes, yeah, you could probably come and watch. I go, no, 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 no. I, I want to be baptized. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could come, come, come watch. I don't think he could hear me saying, I want to be. All he heard was, I want to come and watch. And I said, no, 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 Jim, I want to be baptized. And he kind of stood there and picked his jaw up off the floor. And, and he kind of stumbled through it and he goes, uh, okay, let me check and see. <laughs> you know, how much water do you guys got? And if it starts evaporating, can you fill it up? And uh, uh, he is he comes back, says, yeah, they said you can get baptized, just sign up. And I, I don't really remember all of it. Showed up to church the day of the baptism and uh, uh, showed up. And I was just, I was like in a line with little kids. 
And we're all, like, getting shuffled around, you know, and get ready. Then we're in this back line, and, and I can see the ba baptismal, and so we're getting closer to it. And, uh, uh, and, as, we, and, and as I get up close to the baptismal, I, I can kind of see outside of it, and there's the whole church. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's everybody. <laughs> and then I realize that the guy in there has a little microphone. And he's talking, and then he's asking them a question, and then they're answering the question. And I'm like, oh, no, I've got, I've got to take a test. <laughs> Nobody told me about the test. I'm going to fail the test. I have no idea what I'm doing here. And so uh, I get up in the water, and, and I don't know what he asked me, something about Jesus, and I, don't, I have no idea what I said. And then he put me under the water, came up followed the little line of 12-year-olds again. We walked all the way around, got changed, and they sat us all in the back row. And I tell you this because I want you to know of where I was at at this point in my life, that I sat there, and I just had this overwhelming, euphoric feeling. I can't describe it. The word that I knew to describe it with was the word high. And, and, and I was overcome. And I, have, and, I, and I just sat there. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, Tim, you did drugs today. And I was so mad at myself for doing drugs on the day I was going to get baptized. And this, this is where I was at in my life. And I'm like, God, why would you do that? Just one day, buddy. And uh, I... I start thinking through my day, okay, what drug did I do? <laughs> and so I recount through my day, okay, I woke up, ate breakfast, I kind of recount through my day, I'm like, I didn't do any drugs. I didn't do any drugs today. And I was so proud of myself in that moment. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this is God. What I'm feeling is God. And my mind just went, and then the next thing I thought about, and I did not watch TBN, trust me. The next thing I thought about was getting up and laying my hands on my fellow 12-year-olds so they could feel what I was feeling. <laughs> and I quickly talked myself out of it. I thought, oh, man, they will kick you out of this place so fast. So I just sat there and enjoyed myself. And, and, and I say that for a couple different reasons. Number one, drugs is sat Satan's perversion of God's presence. That the power of God is meant for you. I mean, you should be addicted to the presence of God. It is a euphoric, ecstatic, tangible thing to be in the presence of Almighty God in His glory. It strengthens you spiritually. It helps you physically. That, that's why it says, be not drunk with wine, but, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because anything a substance can have, God can do it way better. Amen. Secondly, you have to know nothing to get baptized. <laughs> nothing. All you have to do is want to be close to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, if you want, we will have the list out there. If you need a towel, we always have extra towels uh, or it's worth driving home wet and close to Jesus. Amen. All right. We're going to pray and then uh, 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 we're going to gather outside. Now, we do have a, a barbecue today. Um, the, the catering team here uh, messaged me and said, what are you thinking? There is no way we will do a baptism without a barbecue. We must celebrate. And I said, okay, have it your way, gentlemen. So they have prepared you guys a barbecue, okay? So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the time you've given us. Lord, I pray that this week we'll remember to take you with us wherever we go and whatever we do. That, Father, we will we'll give us uh, uh, reminders. Holy Spirit, bring it to our remembrance to think about these things how we can walk with you, how we can remind ourselves to remember you're with us wherever we go and whatever we do. Thank you for your rewards that you uh, fill up our lives with good things. And we're so honored to serve you, Father.
And I thank you, Lord, that for the time of baptism to come, that these decisions made in people's hearts are expressed outwardly. And that your power and glory rests on them. And we thank you for all these things. We ask you to bless the food we're going to eat and the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.